Welcome back, Zero K fans, to another exhibition match. This time is going to be a match between Randy and El Torero on Deadlands. Which is a map we actually haven't seen in a long time. I went over one of the tournament matches once, but that was a while ago. I think the first one one tournament ended on a match in Deadlands between Gode and Roan, I think. Anyway, Randy going for Amphib Plant. That's cool to see. And so you can go over that, though. El Torero going for a Cloakabot Factory, which on this map is much more normal. Though admittedly, shield would also be a pretty good idea. But yeah, cloaky bots on a map this size are perfectly normal. Amphib plant is a little bit different. We've seen it before. We actually saw a drone do a decent job with it in the last one we won tournament. But though admittedly, I had no faith in him. That was a mistake. However, I think with amphib plant, kind of tricky because of the fact that ducks. I mean, archers are okay. Archers are pretty powerful, tough units. But ducks are very high risk, high reward units. They one shot. Mexes, they one-shot a lot of things. However, one of the things they one-shot is each other. Which, of course, means that a group of ducks is difficult to have work. They'll end up hitting each other and just killing each other, and that won't work out too well. Anyway, El Torero is... going pretty heavily... well, moderately for raiding. Not super heavily for raiding. He is getting another three glaives. He had two before just for scouting, and another three for additional raiding. Wants to make sure, at the very least, that Randy does not get the hill here. Because that hill is pretty big. Okay, back to viewers. I don't know if the viewer stats were bugged or something, but it looked like I had no viewers. Which obviously on YouTube makes no sense. If you're watching it on YouTube recorded, yeah, it's going to make no sense. But on Twitch, because this is being recorded on Twitch first. Ah, okay, apparently Twitch is having some issues with the iPad version of Twitch. According to Car Repair, so good that it works. I'm glad to hear that. You can watch me on your iPad. Assuming you have an iPad. Which you might. Anyway, El Torero is, I think he's in a pretty good position, actually. He is going to be able to get rid of this duck. These glaives, get rid of the duck, no problem. And from there, I mean, this archer is a bit of a tougher fight. But honestly, I don't think El Torero has to engage. He can just go around, really. I mean, if he goes around, he raids out a bit. That's what glaives are for. Although at this point, Randy does have the radar. He does have radar across most of the map. El Torero has radar across about the same amount of the map. But this big hill in the center, that's really stopping a lot of the radar. That's very important there. Very key thing to bear in mind, as far as terrain is concerned. El Torero expanding more near his base, while Randy pushes more to the center pretty heavily, too. El Torero, however, not raiding out, or raiding up a little bit. He does have one glaive going for raiding purposes, and that's going to be stopped by an archer. Randy, well aware of what's going on, and actually, Randy, I believe, is... Oh, not quite aware of that metal extractor. He's aware of this glaive, though, and that's not going to work out. The archer will not let the glaive get in range to attack. And another Glaive, however, coming in from the north side, but another... Oh, a Conch! No, not an Archer. Archer will be coming afterwards, but no, this Glaive... Well, it's going to engage with this Metal Extractor, and that's... No, is it? No, not quite! It doesn't... Okay, there we go. Now it's engaging with it. But it can't... Didn't have the time... It had the timing before. Didn't have the timing now. It was a very close call. It almost had the right timing to get rid of the Metal Extractor. It didn't quite manage. And El Torero, he's looking to take the center. He might be able to pull it off. It's going to be tricky, though. Getting the center of the map is difficult to do here, but he's got the Lotus. He's There's a defender trying to deal with it, but the defender cannot hit. It's, it does not have proper line of sight to actually deal with that, so it's just missing all of his missiles. Not actually being able to do anything. As you can see, it's just firing. But Randy doesn't actually have line of sight on here. All he has is... He has radar on here, but not line of sight. Once the, However, archers go up there. The archers are going to go up. They are going to get rid of the Lotus. And once they go up there, the defender should be able to start hitting, actually. Yeah, there we go. Now the defenders can actually start hitting. They're firing at the correct spot. Randy moving his commander up, and now taking the hill. He's king of the hill, and El Torero has to be pushed off. But, it's... More glaives coming along the west side of the map. Once again, we have a lot of... A lot of glaives, but too many archers to get in the way. Like I said, archers just do the trick. Ducks don't, but archers most certainly do. Ducks, however, are great once again to the higher higher power units, or if you want to raid. Like, raiding, ducks do well. A couple of ducks going around the map separate from each other. Key, key factor that they have to be separated from each other. Can do a pretty good job, though against a bunch of glaives, I wouldn't recommend it. Archers, great choice. Randy's doing the right thing there. Now, Hammer's coming in to deal with the archers. I can see the Roccos. I'm not sure. Okay, the Hammer's not for the archers. What am I saying? The Hammer's are for the center of the map. 
to get rid of everything on the top of the center of the map. That's the thing. Randy not even going for the metal. Surprisingly enough. Oh, okay, actually, never mind. This is three metal. That's not what counts. What counts is the fact that you have position. The fact that it's really hard to assault and you can build a stinger or anything on here. You could do like the long Kmart versus Yogg-Soth game we just had first where you build a behemoth on the hill. Though admittedly on this hill, that'd be a really stupid idea. It'd be really hard to defend. Like the hill that was built on in the Kmart game, that, that was a hill that you wouldn't even think to look to. But here, not gonna happen. However, what might just happen is, well, let's see. Conch going around the side, and Conch gonna meet up with a Rector. Who can build a defender first? It looks like the Rector will be able to pull it off. That defender is gonna be done first, and that is going to... Is it gonna get rid of the... No, not quite! Not even going for the Conch, going for the Metal Extractor instead. But the Conch's defender is almost done, and now El Toro's defender goes down without doing anything. Hammer trying to get rid of this... Actually, Rock is trying to get rid of this Archer here, but the Archer on lower ground, surprisingly able to avoid that. The altitude shift making it harder, but now that it's gone into even ground, it's no longer easy. And El Torero just now morphing his commander. Randy already morphed his commander. Beam laser E-cell, but he's going for he is going for the kill, I think. He is just he's pushing for it. Archer's pushing in against these Well, there's a couple hammers, but the Rockers are the big problem. The archers can't really get into those Rockos too easily. And El Torero now moving out. Particle beam auto repair. The arch trying to push it back, but El Torero breaking against this break. But the boys, that's what's going to do the trick. Okay, because the thing is, boys... Boys have a lot of health. So boys can just walk up. They don't have enough speed really to deal with the Rockos effectively, though. It's a matter of positioning. If you set up your boys so that they do position things well, and I know car going to get mad at me for saying boy, that's how I pronounce it. Because I'm Canadian. It's, it's Canadian pronunciation. Actually, it's the British pronunciation, but... When in doubt with Canadian pronunciations, it's the British pronunciation. The archers are trying to take the, out the south side of the map, and that's actually going to work out... Pretty well. Yeah, it looks like it's going to work out very well. Enough defenders to deal a bit of damage, but not enough to stop it all. And Randy takes out the southeast, but at the same time, the center being assaulted pretty heavily and not really well defended either. That center hill wasn't very well invested into. These archers in the southeast actually taking, still taking some damage from this lotus. This last lotus is going to get rid of one more archer. In fact, Randy's going to let it go. Just leave it be and have his archers go away from it. The archers actually are fine for ammo, and do manage to kill it off eventually, but that was still quite a few archers being destroyed. And the rogues just need to go up to the center of the map, and it looks like Ultra is going to try to retake that center of the map. And both players have been pretty even economically this entire time, although admittedly Ultra would have been slightly ahead, being that Randy is now on par with him. But Randy has the whole reclaim field to himself. I would expect a couple glaives to go down to the southeast, but it looks like Ultra is not focusing on that. A little surprising he's not building one or two glaives just for extra harassment. He is, however, building a sniper to get possibly rid of the boys. Definitely would help get rid of the commander, but getting rid of the boys, no doubt. And get, like I said, E-Cell Commander, which means that there's only, like, these three wind generators and this one solar plant. Okay, more solar plants now, but that's all that Randy has for energy. Ultra, on the other hand, has a giant line of wind generators. He doesn't have any E-Cell on his commander, but it doesn't matter. Because if he loses his commander, he's not lost half his economy. Whereas Randy will lose half his economy if he loses his commander. Pushing forward to the hammers, not a bad idea. Not the best idea against boys, but still not a bad idea. And the Rockos, however, that's what's going to work. El Toro moving forward with his commander, taking more and more of the center. Really trying to push for it. I'm a bit surprised neither player... Okay, not that surprised neither player's building Stinger up here, but that's... Kind of what I think the hill is meant to be for is actually Stingers. I don't think it's meant to be for Lotuses, and it's certainly not meant to be for expansions. There's only three metal there in three expansions, or three metal spots. Not worth it. But yeah, I think it would be... I think the idea is probably for it to be used with Stingers. Just to protect pretty much this entire area. Stop anything going through the center. That seems most likely. But Randy, once again, pushing back. Big tug of war going on in the center of the map here between El Toro and Randy. Neither player has really managed to deal with the other effectively enough to stop them. Obviously, of course, that would mean winning the game, so... Neither player has won the game. Therefore, the game is continuing. As you can see, I'm a master of the tautology. Very useful logical device when trying to say nothing at all. Now, sharpshooters coming in. That's where it's going to be a bit more useful. I think the sharpshooter does... It has 15, yeah, 1500 damage. Get, gets rid of one boy in one shot. Just about ready, and down goes another boy, killing that. Randy's commander coming in, however, to try to 
Deal some damage, getting rid of this hammer. Well, this hammer should really pay for itself, though. Five times over from the looks of it. At least. That being said, the sharpshooter gets rid of one boy a shunt, which is not bad. But the boys are being built at pretty rapid pace. I don't think the sharpshooter can kill them in a cost-effective way. They, I mean, okay, cost-effective is not the problem, in a time-effective way. Cost-effectiveness is not the issue. Randy, however, jumping his commander once again further in, and El Torero morphing his commander again. He does have an economic advantage. He can get away with this. Building more snipers as well, and the snipers are really doing a good job. Getting rid of these... these boys without any effort. However, El Torero getting... Concussion Shot does miss the commander with his Concussion Shot. A lot of advanced targeting systems, so massive range. Is 462 range on Light Particle. I mean, we have seen this commander before. Yeah. Concussion Shot, total miss. Completely missed the commander. Detonates in the air, does not hit the commander because both of them were in the air at the time. You have to try that again. And the boys are coming in for a full-on assault. The boy assault is probably going to do well, though. The Rockos have... The range advantage, El Torero has the range advantage, I mean, boys have 450 range, so, yeah, El Torero has the range advantage easily. This sniper, or the sharpshooter here, has the range advantage as well, and I think Randy's commander just jumped to his death! He has to retrieve with that commander, his, his only chance to retrieve with that commander. El Torero has retreated with his, but he's gonna go for that concussion shot any second now. There it goes, heavily damages one of the boys, destroys one of the boys, actually. The impact killing it. And this sharpshooter is gonna get on the top of the hill, and then from there, just Gonna have enough range to... Well, okay, has enough range regardless to kill anything. A sharpshooter along the south side of the map, as well as just dealing with everything. And given that concussion shot, El Torero's commander is basically a mini sniper. Getting up to level 4, yeah, we've seen a lot of... A lot of comm morphs since the econ change. Huge amount of commander morphs. I mean, I'm kind of glad to see this, but... At the same time, it's a little bit weird to get used to. And El Torero... Making good use of that concussion shot. And it looks like Randy's commander going around the west side of the map trying to... Looks like he's trying to avoid El Torero. However, El Torero well aware of what's going on. He has radar coverage of this. His sniper's probably just going to go down and deal with the commander. One shot will do it. That sniper... That sniper is going for it. It's going to kill the commander and there's not much that can be done about it. This commander... This is the last thing you see this commander. One second left. There we go. That commander is down. Randy losing his commander, and with that half of his energy economy, and El Torero taking out the rest of his economy as best he can. And another sniper in position, gonna be able to take care of anything it wants, really. Probably gonna wait until it gets to the boy. Nope, just going for the... just He's put his snipers onto free fire. Fire at will mode. No reason not to, really. There's no real opposition anymore. The boys are in play, but that's about it. And they can't even get in range. And they get one-shotted by the snipers. The sharpshooters just one-shot all of them. More sharpshooters coming along the way. And actually, El Toro's been floating metal this entire time, having built... I mean, he had a lot going against Commander. His Commander, however, is very nearly fully upgraded. Not sure he's going to go for a f level 5 Commander from here. But he is now getting a Caretaker. Probably could have used this a few minutes ago, but doesn't matter in this case, in this game. Because he has won the game. Randy hasn't thrown the towel yet, but I think Randy's going to try to... Looks like he's trying to go for rapid defense here. Has some ducks over in the north, in the, sorry, in the east side of the map, heading north, trying to get rid of what they can. But it's not going to help out. Three sharpshooters and commander, clearing everything out, and the ducks do not have a chance. The boys going to try their best, but that's it. Randy throws in the towel, and that is game. Everything explodes. And Lowry, oh, sorry, El Torero wins this game. Lowry was last game. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed that, and I think that's going to be it for me tonight. That first game was really long. That was really, really long. So I hope you enjoyed the games tonight. Thank you all for watching, and have a good night.